So it must be pretty selective, though. When you receive interest from a potential resident, are you, is there a certain aptitude test that you're putting them through? Or how do you know someone's poised to succeed in a program like that, which is so demanding? Well, we have a pretty rigorous application process, mm -hmm. and we can see what they've done in terms of their grades and the scores on uh, tests that they take. Um, a lot, most of the residents that we interview uh, have uh, a number of publications in peer-reviewed literature, and um, it is pretty competitive. We have about uh, 330 applications this year for three slots. Wow. So it... Um, you know, it, it is it is competitive. Neurosurgeons make up about zero point four percent of all the physicians in the United States, and um, so you know, it, it's it's a uh, it's a competitive process. But mostly, what we're looking for are people who are capable of working very hard mm -hmm. uh, and and intensely, people who are capable of, of um, absorbing and processing a lot of technical and scientific information. Uh, and uh, we also want people that have, you know, fine character, like, you know, like they're looking for in the Navy and in, in, in to be astronauts. So uh, those are the those are all the things that we're looking for. Like naval aviation, you know, I'm sure not everybody makes it through the program. You never know whether somebody can land an airplane or an aircraft carrier at night until they actually have to do it. Uh, uh, what is your retention in the program and what are the, what are the sorts of reasons why somebody might either elect to leave the program or they just don't make it through? Studies have been done about this and, and there, the attrition rates probably about eight to 12% in the most competitive program. Overall, it's somewhat lower, maybe closer to four. I think the reason for that is that medical students have a, a good uh, opportunity to test the water in terms of how they're going to do a neurosurgery. And, and, um, you know, so they, they're pretty, they're pretty well informed when they go to enter the program, but some, some people don't, uh, stay in the program. I think the most common reason for that is that they just learn that the intensity and the, and the degree of, of work and long hours is, is not for them. Uh, that's the, probably the most common thing. And they usually decide that in the first couple of years of residency. Uh, sometimes we find some people who just are not capable of managing uh, very critically ill patients and managing a lot of information and they can't process it all. Mm -hmm. That's less common. Uh, occasionally we have people who don't have the technical manual skills to uh, perform surgery well. That's relatively uncommon, I think. But uh, uh, the attrition probably is oh, it's overall about, you know, 8 to 10 percent. That's actually not that bad for such a demanding program. Yeah, you probably, by the no. time you get in, you probably have been pretty you're, carefully screwed. You're committed, yeah.